For the given matrix A, list the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenspaces of A. Determine if A is diagonalizable. And if it is, find an invertible matrix P and diagonal matrix D, such that the inverse of P times A times P equals matrix D. So the first thing that we need to do here is find the eigenvalues of matrix A by solving the characteristic equation. Now looking at this characteristic equation, we need to find matrix A minus lambda times the identity matrix. And combining up those like terms, we are left with the three by three matrix going across row one, one minus lambda, zero, zero, three, three minus lambda, one, and eight, zero, one minus lambda. So now we're ready to find the determinant of matrix A minus lambda times the three by three identity. So I am gonna go ahead and compute the determinant here by doing a cofactor expansion across row one. So this is leaving us with one minus lambda multiplied by the two by two determinant, three minus lambda one, zero, one minus lambda. And computing this two by two determinant, we are left with one minus lambda multiplied by three minus lambda times one minus lambda minus zero. And simplifying this, we are left with the characteristic polynomial one minus lambda squared times three minus lambda. So now setting this characteristic polynomial equal to zero, we have our characteristic equation and applying the zero factor property. Now get be mindful here with our first binomial, we see we have a geometric multiplicity of two, right? That factor appears twice. So this tells us that lambda sub one equals lambda sub two equals positive one. And with our second binomial, we have an algebraic multiplicity of one. So this leaves us with lambda sub three is equal to three. So these are the eigenvalues, and we're ready now to go ahead and find the corresponding eigenspace for each eigenvalue. And because we have two eigenvalues, we'll have two cases. So case one, when lambda equals one. Now in order to find the eigenspace for lambda equals one, we need to find the null space for matrix A minus one times the identity. So let's begin by finding matrix A minus one times the identity matrix. So combining up those like terms going across row one, we have a row of zeros, so zero, zero, zero. Going across row two, we are left with three, two, one. And going across row three, we're left with eight, zero, zero. So we're now ready to find the null space of this matrix by row reducing matrix A minus the identity, augmented with the zero vector, to row reduced echelon form. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is interchange the first row with a scalar multiple of 1 8th times the third row. And so this is leaving us with the three by three matrix going across row one, one, zero, zero, three, two, one, zero, zero, zero. So now using our first pivot position, we can use this to eliminate the entry below it by doing minus three times the first row plus the second row, which leaves us with the matrix one, zero, 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 two, one, zero, zero, zero. And we're almost there. Going to our second pivot position, here we just need to multiply by a scalar multiple of one half. So we have one half times the second row, and this leaves us with our row reduced echelon form, one, zero, 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 one, one half, zero, zero, zero. And so this is letting us know that x sub one is equal to zero, that x sub two is equal to negative one half times x sub three, and that x sub three is free. So we can now use this to define the set of all non-trivial solutions. 
we have our set vector x, which is a vector in R3, where x sub 1 is defined as 0, where x sub 2 is defined as negative 1 half times x sub 3, and since x sub 3 is free, it's just itself. And we can factor out that scalar multiple x sub 3 to the front. So you have x sub 3 times the vector 0, negative 1 half 1. And there's nothing wrong with this form. The only negative is that this vector has a fraction. But we can fix this by multiplying by the least common denominator. So this is equivalent to saying we have the scalar multiple x sub 3 multiplied by the vector with components 0, negative 1, 2. So now we're ready to state what our basis is for the eigenspace e sub 1. So I'm going to use the second form, the, the vector without fraction components. So our eigenspace e sub 1 is defined as the set of all scalar multiples of the vector 0, negative 1, 2. Or we can write this in the equivalent spanning set form and say that this is equivalent to the span of the vector 0, negative 1, 2. So this is the eigenspace for lambda equals 1. And we're now ready to move on to case 2, where we are considering when lambda is equal to 3. So again, in order to find the eigenspace of the eigenvalue lambda equals 3, we need to find the null space of the matrix A minus 3 times the identity matrix. So let's find this matrix A minus 3 times the identity matrix. So combining up those like terms, when we go across row 1, we are left with negative 2, 0, 0. Going across row 3, or excuse me, row 2, we're left with 3, 0, 1. And going across row 3, we're left with 8, 0, negative 2. So now we're ready to take this matrix and row reduce to a row reduced echelon form to find the set of all possible non-trivial solutions. So I'm going to start here simply by simplifying the first row and the second row. We see that we can multiply the first row by a scalar multiple of negative 1 half, and I'm going to multiply the third row by a scalar multiple of positive 1 half. So we are left here in the first row, 1, 0, 0. Our second row remains as it is, 3, 0, 1. And the third row is now 4, 0, negative 1. So with our first pivot, we can use that to eliminate the entries below it by doing minus 3 times the first row plus the second row and doing a negative 4 times the first row plus the third row. And so this is going to leave us with the 3 by 3 matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And last but not least, we take our second pivot and use it to eliminate the entry below it. And we can simply do this by adding the second row to the third row. Leaving us with the matrix, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Beautiful. So we have attained row reduced echelon form of the matrix. And this is telling us that x sub 1 is equal to 0, that x sub 2 is free, and that x sub 3 is equal to 0. So using this linear system, we can write a general solution for the set of all non-trivial solutions. So we have vector x is a vector in R3, where x sub 1 is defined as 0, x sub 2 is free, so it's just itself, and x sub 3 is 0. So factoring out that scalar multiple of x sub 3, or excuse me, x sub 2, we have x sub 2 times the vector 0, 1, 0. And we're ready to state a basis for our eigenspace. We can say that the eigenspace E sub 3 is the set of all scalar multiples of the vector 0, 1, 0. Or we can write this in the spanning set and say that this is the span of the vector 0, 1, 0. Beautiful.
beautiful. So now that we have the eigenspace for each one of those eigenvalues, let's use the eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenspaces to determine if matrix A is diagonalizable. So our first two eigenvalues, lambda sub 1 equals lambda sub 2 equals 1. And its corresponding eigenvector, vector v sub 1 with the components 0, negative 1, 2. And our third eigenvalue, lambda sub 3 equals 3, has the corresponding eigenvector, vector v sub 2, with components 0, 1, 0. Now, a quick love note here. Since matrix A is a 3 by 3 matrix, we know that in order for matrix A to be diagonalizable, it must have three linearly independent eigenvectors. Now, since all other eigenvectors of matrix A are multiples of these two vectors, matrix A will never have three linearly independent eigenvectors, which means matrix A is not diagonalizable. 